I get hundreds of emails from students across the globe who will ask me similar questions, very similar questions. The first one being, should I go for a government job or is private job better for me? I'm in the biotech sector. Should I go for bio entrepreneurship, which is good for me? So today I'm going to, without bias, I'm going to try to simplify all this for you so that you can make a better decision for your career so that you are empowered to take the right decision because your career is very important. Your directions are very important. Today you choose the wrong direction. Tomorrow you'll regret it and you can't go back. Right? You can't go back. For example, I chose bio entrepreneurship. Can I go back in time and take any other job? No, I can't. Now this is my field. This is my uh, path. The same way, whether you should go for a government job, whether you should go for a private job, whether you should jump into bio entrepreneurship, that's the question we are going to answer in this particular video. But without any bias, I'm not going to put words in your mouth. You are the decision maker, but I'm just going to try to help you. Right? So let's start with the first part of this session, which is government job. Right? Okay. That's a there's a crazy mania about government jobs. So let's not talk about it. If you have a crazy mania for government job, I think you should skip this video and go for it. There's no point in discussing. But if you are confused in between government job and private job, let's move forward and see what's the first pointer for us. The first pointer for us is job security, right? Job security. What does it mean? Now, government is the biggest investor. Let me repeat. Government is the biggest investor in the biotech sector, no matter it is US government, Chinese government, Russian government, Indian government. So you mean to say you should work in the biggest company in the country. That's government, of course. So obviously, if you're working in the biggest company in the country, so you, you'll have job security. Government jobs always have job security unless you do something wrong or illegal. Now, the second thing, which is a good as well as bad. Now, the good part about research focus is when Government has a research focus, you can't change it. So now if the government wants you to focus on virology, you have to go in that direction. The government is focusing more on BT cotton, now you have to go in that direction. You can't change the research focus of government. Whatever they say, you have to do. They're the boss. Okay. The second thing, you can't really go and even advise because they decide the research focus. The prime minister of the country, the board of, direct, board of uh, um, ministers or the principal scientific advisor, he is in control. You are not in control. That's a bad part. The good part is if you have a specialization in that, you grow, right? So that's the second part. Now, let's look at the third point, which is bureaucracy. Bad thing, right? We all hate bureaucracy. Now, what's the problem with bureaucracy? One file will take years to move forward. So suppose you have a research proposal. Just before this, I read a tweet by one researcher and she was upset that SCRB has rejected her uh, research proposal. So what happened? Bureaucracy. I'm not saying that SCRB may be right or wrong, but what I'm saying is it takes years together to get one file moved from one table to another. And that is where you have to wait. You need a lot of patience. You need a lot of persistence. And in my previous videos also, I have told about this, that this is a problem. Bureaucracy is going to be a problem. Let's look at the fourth point, which is lower pay. Okay. Lower pay? Really? Yes. You see, in private sector, I'm not biased, okay, but I'm just telling you, in private sector, your work decides your pay. But in government sector, the pay commission decides your pay. So, so no matter whether you do a very good job or just a regular job, you still as good as the regular guy, right? So that's a problem with the government job. Now, another thing which is public service. Now, that's something which if it motivates you, you want to do, you know, your obligation to, your, to the government, to the government of India, or you want to deliver duty to the public. You love your country like how I am. So I had a chance to move out of the country. I didn't do it because I wasn't, you know, madly in love with India. So if you are one such guy, so yeah, you can always get into public service where what you'll do is you uh, obviously are mo motivated and driven because your research will impact the regular public, general public. So yeah, that is something if it, if it motivates you, so you can go for it. Another, another very important point which you should consider if you want to get into government job is you should know that only 0.1%, 0.1% of the people who apply get selected. So that is where you should not completely reject private jobs. Let's jump in and see what is private job giving us now in the private sector. So, okay, let's jump into private job now. Let's look at the first thing which we have. Private jobs are always innovative. And that is something which I always love about. Private jobs are always going to get you amazing results. Okay, they are always innovative. You can't just sit on a table and sleep and 
expect growth. You have to really be responsible for your actions. You have to be the propeller of innovation. You have to be the person who gets work done. So yeah, that's where private biotech jobs are. The second thing, so if innovation motivates you, you should get into a private job. The second one is a career advancement. Now, what happens when you're trying to advance in your career? Now, one of the most important thing which you all should know is when I want to advance in my career and if my, if my performance is not a criteria, then probably I'm at the wrong place. I think I would think like that. So, but that's what happens when you are trying to uh, work in a government. Your, your pay scale is decided by pay commission, not by your performance. But in private sector, the better the performance, the better you get at it. Now let's move on to the third point which we have for us and that is job flexibility. Now in government, you don't have a job flexibility. Now what does it mean? You have, you know, you really don't know whom to approach to if you want something, right? But in the private sector, you know, you have, you'll have an immediate boss, you can reach out, you can discuss, you can ask for flexible timings, flexible hours, and you can always get it. I'm not saying you don't get that in government. Yes, in many departments you get it, but government has their own rules which you can't change. So yeah, that is where the flexibility doesn't come in. Now let's move on to the fourth point which I have for you. And that is competitive environment. Now everybody likes plus hates competition. Now we all love competition because that makes us more innovative, that makes us more competitive and helps us achieve greater results. But the hate part of competition is there can be politics, there can be situations which can be toxic. But that happens in government jobs also. It is not just in the private jobs. But yeah, competitive environment will be there that will propel you towards a better performance. I personally feel that's a good thing that there is competition because that way you will foster innovation. You will be able to grow faster. Now, the last part is risk factor. The risk factor is whenever there is a recession, whenever there is, the company goes in loss or the company shuts down, you lose your job. That's where, okay, that's a problem. But to solve that, yeah, the experience which you have, you can apply in the next company and use that. So it's not that it's not a bad thing, but yeah, that's a risk factor which can happen, which is happening, I think, right now, but not in the biotech sector, but in other sectors, we are seeing that. But yeah, that's a risk which always is there. But that risk is always there in government also that somebody, uh, you know, uh, blames you for doing something illegal and uh, then you lose your job. That happened to uh, Dr. Nambi, right? So it, he was a scientist in ISRO. So it's not that it, it won't happen in government or private sector. It can happen anywhere. The risk is always there. Now let's jump on to the third part, which is bio-entrepreneurship. Starting a company in the biotech sector is going to be an amazing feeling. And when you create solutions which people love, that's exactly what motivates you. So if you are somebody who wants to become a bio entrepreneur, let's talk about it right now. Now, government job is not bad. Neither is private job nor is entrepreneurship. I want to tell you is you need to find a product passion fit. You need to find what's your passion. You need to find what is going to satisfy you. Are you someone who is a risk taker or are you someone who just wants a safe job? So you need to decide that. Or And the biggest risk which you can take in your life is entrepreneurship. But hey, that can always be calculated and make it, you can minimize this. But the first thing which comes in my mind here is innovation. Whenever you are a bio entrepreneur, the first thing which you'll start with is an innovation. You'll, you'll create something which has never been done and you will bring it to the market, right? Maybe your research work, maybe something. So any day you can convert yourself into a uh, innovator into a bio entrepreneur any researcher can convert himself into a bio entrepreneur any day now the second part money and fame now the biggest part of the chunk of money as well as fame comes when you become a bio entrepreneur look at dr shaw or anyone who is a bio entrepreneur you can see the money they have made and the fame they have so the biggest amount of money you can make is in bio entrepreneurship government job peace stability security but no growth probably Private job, growth, peace, uh, security to some extent, but stability, not really. Bio-entrepreneurship, you have money, fame, but risk. But yeah, satisfaction. That's a, that's something which we'll talk in the next uh, slides. But yeah, th that's what I wanted to say here. So risk involved, right? So you have a lot of risk, but you can always calculate and minimize that risk. If you want to become a bio-entrepreneur, you can reach out to me. I'll guide you because my goal here is to start 3000 biotech companies in the next 10 years. And if you are somebody who, is, who want to become a bio-entrepreneur, reach out to me, I'll help you out. Now let's move on to the next part, which is satisfaction. So you have 
a lot of satisfaction if you are an entrepreneur because you're doing something new, you're doing something different, you're doing something which has never been done and that brings immense amount of satisfaction. In fact, I'll tell you, I am shooting this video, this, this kind of video has never been done and it's a great satisfaction for me. In fact, we, are, we do a lot of workshops and certifications and um, internships and coaching stuff and a lot of new things in that. That's a great, amazing satisfaction for me. The same way, if you are doing your research, it's satisfying. What if you could convert your satisfying research into a commercializable product and sell it? Make millions and billions out of it. That's the satisfaction you get here, right? When you see your particular research in the lab going out in the market and people using it and being happy. For example, uh, you know, artificial meat, right? Plant-based meat. So that could be one. So there are multiple examples of that that we'll take up in the next one. But uh, let's look at the next one, which is passion. Yeah. So you ha you do get passion, a lot of passion. If you are somebody who is passionate about research, if you're somebody who's passionate about making a lot of money, if you're someone who loves entrepreneurship, who has that can-do attitude, risk taker, then yeah. So you have to look at product passion fit before you look after this particular field. The last part, which is the satisfaction of addressing unmet needs. Now, let's look at that. So if they, there is a demand, there is a need in the market. For example, there's a lot of malnutrition and lack of food. You, if your solution tolerates the growth of food in the field, so that's a great satisfaction. So that is something which if you want to do addressing unmet needs, then you can go for bio entrepreneurship. So this was all about today's session where we can, uh, you know, compared about our um, government jobs, private jobs, as well as bio entrepreneurship. Without any bias, if you ask me personally, if you ask me personally, so this is not a bias. This is my, my personal opinion. I would have done bio entrepreneurship 100 times more again. If you ask somebody who wants a safe, secure job with stability, then he should go for a government job. But the selection process is 0.1% people get a government job. If you are somebody who uh, is a hustler, who is an innovator, who wants to grow in life, but doesn't want to take so much of risk in life, so you, you can always go for a private job. Let me tell you a point that none of these are bad. None of these are something you sh which you should look down upon. Instead, all these type of jobs have their own role to play, but you decide your role. That's very, very important. You have to decide. No one else should. Your mentors should assist your professional mentor, your emotional mentor, your parents should assist you in your decision. But you have to make that decision. Let me know in the comment section which one you prefer. What are your pointers? What are more pointers you would like to add? What would you choose if you have to choose today? So this we end this video. Thank you so much for watching. It was wonderful interacting with all of you. See you soon in the next one. Till then, take care. Bye-bye.